No, no. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. We begin with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah to send his peace and his blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let's proceed. He was intelligent sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How? Never. You see all the idol worshipping, people worshipped idols, never in his life he touched an idol, touched it. Not once. Let alone what? Prostrate. Let alone sacrifice a camel or whatever for an idol. Never did intelligent. Even though he was against idol worshipping, the people still very much trusted him with everything. Someone traveling away from Mecca, precious items, he does not leave it. She does not leave it with mom and dad. He does not leave it. She does not leave it with son and daughter or brother and sister. They said Muhammad Wasallam. Can you watch over my stuff? I'm traveling. That's the level of trust he had in his community. Brothers and sisters, he was the most humble, one of the strongest of men. And he was most handsome, yet he kept his humbleness. May Allah keep us humble and keep us trustworthy and make us intelligent and friendly, thankful, helpful, a family, man and woman and truthful. Say Amin. Another highlight, he was respectful. Not once did he abuse or harass a woman or man. No, no book, open whatever book you want, you will not find a narration. And lastly, there's more, but just for the sake of time and summary, he was just and fair. He sees oppression, he lifts it and tries to give justice to the one who's oppressed as much as he can. And I wanna advise you all, yes, we need to seek to lift oppression from around the world, but you know what would not make sense? When we do not try to lift oppression in the house. Yes or no? How can I, as a young man or so, go try to, yeah, free the people, free the people. Their slavery still exists. When you are enslaving your parents, yes or no? No thank you, nothing, as if you bought them and you will sell your parents, yes or no? And parents as well, where is the oppression? Sometimes in the house, when we may not be fair with one child over the other, correct? May Allah forgive us and protect us. So yes, he lifts oppression. Whatever he sees, close proximity, and he moves forward. Ah, oh, this man. These are like, like who in the world is compatible with a man like Muhammad? Yes or no? Like, like who has a chance? Who is the lucky woman that he would end up being with? What if I told you he will be the lucky man if he ended up with that one specific woman? Oof, 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 oof. Really, yes. If Muhammad was the greatest man in Mecca, brothers and sisters, if he was the greatest man in Mecca, then Khadija is the greatest woman in Mecca. Oof. If he was known as the trustworthy, as the truthful, she was known as the pure, as the modest, trustworthy and truthful. Oof. If he was known as someone from a prospected lineage, my parents never did something outside of marriage, even my great grandparents, so did Khadija's family and coming from a respected lineage. If Muhammad never touched an idol or worshipped or had any religious affiliation of such sort, so did Khadija. Never touched an idol or believed that they benefit or they harm. Awesome. Two key differences though. Khadija had a lot more money than Muhammad Number two, Khadija, according to much of the narrations, she was significantly older than Muhammad And the majority, the majority and the majority of the historians and experts in the field, they say she was 40 years old and he was 25 years old, approximate. But the main point is what? What's the main point that she was what? What's the key word? Older, that's most definite. So now, what will happen? Muhammad is now knowing about Khadija. And Khadija is monitoring and watching. Muhammad is aware of him. Khadija, brothers are lining up. <laughs> lining up to Khadija. Rich, status, looks, all the good stuff that every man would dream of. And she rejects him, rejects him. She's wise. She's not going to be in that desperate mode or anything. I, no, no. Reject people from Quraysh, the chieftains, the big shots. No. But now she sees Muhammad This man is special. She learns about him. She puts him to the test. She checks what he does and things of that sort. She sees his business interactions and, and so on. And she says he is, and she knows he is the man. He is the one who is compatible. And 
all narrations I'm aware of, when the experts in the field of authority in the life of Muhammad they all say that the one who initiated the marriage proposal was Khadija. And I want to add something. Khadija the modest started. Khadija the pure initiated the proposal. She comes to teach us something. I know it's a little bit of a sensitive topic, but we'll play inshallah safe and real. Is that sometimes, sometimes, we feel in a panic, disrespectful mode when our daughters or our family from the girl's side initiates the idea. Why you seem so desperate? No, if he wants you, he will come to you. Khadija is teaching us, if he's that great, do your stuff, do your networking and let it come from you. And the most respectful of women in Mecca, Khadija, knew that this does not scratch her honor. But I gotta warn you something. I gotta warn you from something. You gotta watch out which family you do this to. Because it can backfire when the ones you're doing to will stab you in the back, yes or no? And ruin your reputation. So watch out. Things are very difficult. So I would tell you, in general, appreciate your mom and dad's experience in life, okay? And mom and dad, don't be too intimidated to do something from your end if you're the one who has the daughter. Even though the culture is kind of not very friendly with that. You guys agree or not? It's a bit cringy. I remember one time in the masjid, I will never forget, I really appreciated that. A father came to me, he said, this man is really wonderful. And brother, you know how very few good men are out there. I'm like, yep, I know that, right? We see that and Allah knows best. Allah knows best, correct? So he said, can you please do something? Tell him, you know, that you know of a girl who is single and is willing to get, can you, can you do something? And I did, and alhamdulillah, eventually they got married. That's not very common case, but alhamdulillah, it worked out. But the point being is don't be shy. The greatest of men and women did go through that. So I pray to Allah, may Allah grant you all a righteous spouse. I mean, the singles, relax, <laughs> okay? I mean, I mean, you're a married man or miskin, what are you doing, okay? Okay? So then Khadija initiates the proposal. Muhammad Sallallahu is absolutely happy and excited. Khadija, and he does not mind, I have a chance. Yes, you have a chance and Khadija, initiates that in Muhammad Sallallahu with his family, they come to Khadija's father, guardian, and they propose to Khadija, and the father of Khadija, in an authentic narration, he rejects Muhammad. So the brothers are like, Takbir, it's not just me then. <laughs> Muhammad Sallallahu just got rejected. He rejected. Her father rejected. He says, Abi Talib la la umri. He said, you want me to get you married to the orphan of Abu Talib? Under his care, I swear never in my life will I accept that. Khadija, business. She talks to him here and there, words, does her thing, whatever she has to do, hatta rudi, until she, he was convinced and accepted. And here you go, one more for you guys. Bam. <laughs> A nice red heart. They got married, Khadija and Muhammad Sallam. They never indulge in anything before marriage. Anything that is, would scratch their reputation or scratch their souls. May Allah protect us, say Ameen. And you know what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said in an authentic narration? He says, Inni qadru ziktu hubba. Yeah, all, all the way, all the way. He said, her love was deeply, her love was deeply rooted in my heart. My, I continue to love her day by day, day by day, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Brothers and sisters, However, as the marriage was proceeding and things were going great and Khadija was completely supportive, all of a sudden the Kaaba is on the verge of collapse. Brother, wait, wait, wait. How, when did this happen? This happened about 10 years after the marriage of Muhammad and Khadija. They had children. Yes, the first child they had was Al Qasim. But then Al Qasim passed away at a very young age. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Khadija did not, giving up, did not give up on getting children. Then they got one child after the other. One child after the other. It was back to back. They got four girls. They got Zainab, Ruqayya, Umm Kalthum, and Fatima. Wonderful. And when everybody was like, oh, just girls, they were so happy to have girls. May Allah make us proud of the girls that we have. Say, I mean, but things, as they progressed about 10 years later, this thing is happening. The Kaaba was about to collapse. What, another attack? No, flood waters. Flood took place in Mecca. And the walls are no longer being strong enough to hold the house. 
So they are now about to rebuild the Kaaba. Interesting. So you know what usually happens with building stuff? They bring the slaves, right? Remember the slavery, correct? So the slaves used to build stuff, but because it's the Kaaba, who will build it? The chieftains, right? The elite. This is the Kaaba, I want to contribute. Roll up the sleeves, I'm going to work as hard as possible. And who contributed? Muhammad You have to appreciate something. He would not have contributed if he did not have a supporting spouse. Are you guys with me? And you have to highlight that aspect from her. So she full of support and Muhammad helped. Every sub-tribe of Quraysh, every sub-tribe of Quraysh, the caretakers of the Kaaba, participated in the rebuilding of the Kaaba. Allah knows when exactly, but Muhammad وسلم, perhaps took a break. Took what? It's break, break time. So he took a break and the others were building the Kaaba. They reached a point where now they have to place what? A regular brick? No. There's something special about the Kaaba besides the bricks that are being used, something known as the black stone. Okay, what's the black stone? Take it easy on me. Black stone was believed, black stone was believed to be a rock or a stone that came from the heavens. Okay, it's a stone that the Creator sent down. That's what they believe. So when they were building the Kaaba and they arrived to the time to put what? Just make sure you got it. To put what? The black stone. One of the sub-tribes said, whoa, 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 lift your hands off this. What do you mean? My family will have the honor to put the black stone. Another sub-tribe said, no, 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 no. You got to relax. You got to relax. My family will put the black stone. Put your hands away from this. Another family said, you, hey, the both of you, relax. Chillax, I'm putting the black stone. They said, what are you talking about? No, we will put it. No, we will put it. If you don't take your hands off the black stone, you may no longer have hands. Are they that serious? They're about to what? Start a war within the family. Over what? Prestige. Status. I want to put the black stone. They grab swords against your cousins, against your uncle. Is that how obsessed you Arab at that time were about status and reputation at the expense, at the bloodshed of your family? So one wise man, one on the edge of war, not for a day or two people. They fought for over 30 years, some Arab over what? Killing of what? A camel. What about the black stone they believe from heavens? Yes or no? So then one wise man said, listen, listen, everybody stop. Put your swords back, stop. How about the first person who walks from these doors, whatever tribe he belongs to, he and that tribe gets the honor to put the black stone. What do you guys think? He will be the judge. Agreed, 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 agreed. And what are they all doing? Looking at the door. <laughs> I wish it's my, from my tribe. I wish it's from my tribe. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And who walks in? None other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By consensus, the people are saying, Atakum al amin The trustworthy has come. They felt no one is more deserving. Look at the status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Look, about 35 years old. Atakum al amin The trustworthy has just come. He definitely is deserving of this. Muhammad when he comes, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, I don't have a narration, but everybody was staring at him. What, don't you guys think so? <laughs> like, like, is everything okay? Like, what's going on, right? So they explained the story to him. Listen, this was happening. We're about to kill each other. And, and this is like seriously like bloodshed. And we said, whoever walks in, whatever tribe they belong to, and you're the one who walked in and couldn't be any better, congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, you put the black stone. He got the idea. This is what he does. He caught everybody off guard. He said, I want a sheet. What? A sheet? Okay. Here you go. Sheet. Okay, perfect. All right. Then Muhammad grabbed the black stone and he placed it right in the middle. Okay. He said, I want every single sub tribe of Quraysh to send me a representative to hold part of the sheet. 
How thoughtful was that? So they placed the black stone right in the garment and then he said, I want every sub-tribe to send a representative. And everyone came. And can you imagine how they felt? Like your greatness is on a whole nother level. Yes or no? He could have got all the honor. So everyone carried it, carried it, carried it all the way. Everybody contributed. And right when they arrived to the Kaaba, Muhammad picked it and he installed it. So the point being, Muhammad Sallam, I want to ask you a question. His status after that did not, did it not skyrocket? He saved the people from bloodshed and so on. It's amazing. Years of love and happiness and joy with Khadija and Muhammad Hassan. It was absolute greatness. May Allah grant us a blessed marriage. Say, I mean, all of us here. So afterwards, brothers and sisters, Muhammad Sallam is now approaching the age of what? 40 years old. Greatness upon greatness. Enough saying that. All of a sudden, like any night, he has a dream. And the dreams he's having are regular dreams. Regular. I'll give you an example. Not of a dream he had, but just an example of a simple dream. He dreams of someone, as an example, eating an apple. One bite, two bites, three bites. As this man in the dream is about to take the fourth bite, the apple what? Falls. The apple rolls. The man goes down on his right knee, picks up the apple, stands up, washes the apple, and takes the fourth bite. Muhammad Sallam, he wakes up, regular day, and what does he see? A man whom he saw in the dream. Okay. And he was holding an apple just like the dream. He took three bites just like the dream. The apple fell and rolled on the floor just like the dream. He went down on his knees, picked up the apple just like the dream. Then he took the fourth bite just like the dream. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Okay, it happened to me before, brother. It's called deja vu. Okay, okay, relax. <laughs> okay, okay. You get deja vus every day? Okay, so next night, same thing. Dream happens, identical. What in the world is going on? What is going on? Third night, same thing. The dream, next morning, identical. He dreams it's raining, it rains. He dreams someone dies, it happens. He dreams someone delivered a boy, it happens. What is going on? This is like unbelievable. Obviously he shares it with his wife, supportive wife Khadija radiallahu anha. So true dreams that he had. Then all of a sudden at the age of 40, which is not his usual at all, he expresses to Khadija something. What is it? He wants what? Alone time. Really? Yes. Khadija, what did she do? Full of support. Allahu Akbar Khadija, Khadija people, Khadija. She saw Muhammad being the greatest of men, the greatest of family men. Remember that, yes? Gave everybody their rights, but now wants some alone time. Did Khadija facilitate that for him? She did. She prepared the food and the drink and whatever accessories or necessities he needs for his trip. Okay, can I ask you a question? Sure. Where is he going to go? He wants to go up far from Mecca, away from the congestion of the city, the traffic. Where does he want to go? Up to a mountain to a cave called the cave of Ghar Hira. Okay, and would you, would I mind if, can I ask you a question? Yes, why does he have this inclination? Like why does he want to have some time alone? He wants to worship. I don't get it, what do you mean worship? He wants to, the hadith says, he wants to go and ponder over the creation and ponder over the creator, the developer of all of that. This is something else. This is amazing. So he wants to know what's the purpose of life and what's the mission and he sees oppression and what is this life all about? He wants to have that connection with the creator. I'm saving it, I'm saving it till this session. Ready? When we speak about having someone who is a creator, pay attention, please, please, please pay attention. When we speak about a creator, someone that caused something to happen, that is not a tall claim. It's not. Are you guys with me? It's a very simple fact that someone caused the universe to come to place. You're like, no, but you know there's a chance. How? Like, on what basis do you say that? I ask you, if you see a book, you see my notes? Here we go. See my notes? 
okay? You see the notes, you go over my notes, for example, like that's pretty organized, right? So you wonder, who are these notes belonging to, right? Who typed it up, yes or no? Is that why you ask, yes or no? Who does this document belong to? Do you ever ask or do you ever say there's a possibility it doesn't belong to no one? <sighs> How? The way this was formed is that there was some disorder. An ink fell onto the pages and formed itself into letters, an F and an I and a T and everything. And, and you cannot deny there's a chance. Yeah, there's a chance, yeah. One in what? Quadrillion, billion? But do you actually ever say that to a book? To a note? Do you ever say that? You will never get married, I promise. <laughs> you, I, I, I get, I'm gonna work on you never getting married if you say that, okay? <laughs> yes or no? Someone had to write this eight, eight, 10 pages. Then what about a DNA of a body that requires 10,000 books to explain? Yes or no? But there's a chance we came from monkeys. Because <laughs> brother, the, you never, there's a chance. There's a chance. I wish you had so much hope in life like that. There's a chance, right? What are you talking about? Wow. You would not say that about a document. And even there's a chance now when it comes to the skies, to the mountains, to the planets, to the universe, to the body of the human being, you're telling me no one was involved who is powerful, who is intelligent, that had to be involved? I'm not jumping to conclusions. I'm not saying it's Allah, pray five times. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you have to admit people, someone intelligent, powerful, never created, had to start and do the cause, yes or no? Simple, don't complicate that which is simple. People wanna ruin our brains and stab our consciousness and our logic. They say, think about it, think, I'm thinking about it. That's it, done, it's over. Back and forth. How long are you spending in the cave? Several nights, brothers and sisters. Not one or two, several nights. Whenever he runs out of food and drink, he goes back to whom? To his wife, Khadija. Khadija, I wanna go back again. She said, no problem. Food, drink for several nights. But all of a sudden, greetings. He hears, what? He hears people greeting him. He's walking, doing his thing. Want to go back to the cave or so. And all of a sudden he, see, he hears, he hears, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. There's no one around. What was the sentence? Peace be upon you, O messenger, O agent of Allah, the creator. What's going on? Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you, O Messenger, O Agent of Allah, the Creator. There's no one around. Lo and behold, the greeting was coming from a rock and a tree. فَمَا مَرَّ بِجَانِبِ جَبَلٍ وَلَا شَجَرٍ وَلَا حَجَرٍ إِلَّا قَالَ Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. What is going on? <laughs> Can you, can, can you try to see where he's coming from, how he's feeling? He's feeling there's something going on. Dreams, I don't usually want like alone time and greetings. What in the world is happening? Brothers and sisters, he goes up to the cave looking for answers. He expresses that to his wife and she's full of support. Never did his wife accuse him of being mentally ill or anything of like, like that sort or you are possessed, never full of support. You'll be fine, you'll be fine, full of support. May Allah make every husband and every wife supportive to one another on good causes. Say Ameen. Then he goes onto the cave and it's on a Monday. Late at night in the month of Ramadan, the ninth month of the Arabic calendar, just like what September is to many of us. Sitting in the cave at night, pondering, and it's how long of a walk, by the way, how long of a walk is it? It's about an hour walk approximately to go from the bottom of the mountain to the cave. And that's when you have a steps and so on. He had no steps, no path. Sitting in the cave, dark night, all of a sudden, someone walks in. He tells him, Iqra. What? Iqra. 
Read. He said, Ma'ana biqara, I cannot read. So this person comes in and he squeezes them so hard. And Muhammad is what? So strong. Remember that. He cannot break from it. He cannot break from it. This man is so empowering him, so much, so forceful. Muhammad is oxygen is running out. He's about to face death. Then he lets go. Iqra, read. Muhammad said, I cannot read. Ma'ana biqara, I cannot read. Brings him again, squeezes him so hard. About to crush him. He can no longer breathe. His face color changes. Let's go. Iqra. Ma ana I cannot read. I cannot read. I'm unlettered. I cannot read. He brings him and he squeezes him so hard, squishes him so hard. Muhammad thinks he's gonna die. He's gonna die. He's a strong man. Cannot break through. Then he releases him. Then he says, Iqra bismi rabbik. He told him, read with the help and the assistance of your Lord. Read. Read with the assistance of your Lord. Iqra bismi rabbikal. Who is my Lord? Alladhi khalaq. The one who created. The one who created everything. The sky that you were looking at. The mountains you were looking at. The camels that you were riding. Everything he created. Iqra bismi rabbik. Alladhi khalaq. And specifically, khalaq al-insan. Muhammad is listening to this. Khalaq al-insan. He created the human being specially. Min alaq. What? Min alaq? From a piece that looks like a suspended blood clot and leech. Wow. You see, you see Muhammad, you see people, this fully loaded piece of information, you will be able to absorb it. You will be able to comprehend it. You will be like a well read, educated person, even though you never read or write, wrote. Just like how we made you out of a leech, blood clot. Iqra bismi rabbik, read with the assistance of your Lord, the one who created specially the human being from a alaq. Iqra, so read. Wa akram your Lord is the most generous. One of the greatest signs of his generosity, alladhi allama bil qalam. One of his greatest signs of his generosity is that he will preserve what is being said to you through writing for ages and ages. Not just that, another blessing. <laughs> he taught the human being that which they never know. He did, and he will teach more and more. And he just taught you one thing that no one in the world can know in the sixth century or the seventh century, except the one who made the embryo, yes or no? And he gave him that one piece of information and that man disappeared. Muhammad was terrified. Muhammad is about to run. Running at the dark of the night. I'm not waiting. He's terrified. He's scared. Going through the rocks. Going through the sand. Going through the stones. Running and running and running to who? I will not say he's running to his house. I refuse to say that. He is running, running to his wife Khadija. Khadija radiallahu anha, he walks in and right then and there, he says, cover me, cover me, cover me. Zambiluni, zambiluni. Khadija comes and she covers him right away. One cover, two, covering him. And she does not interrupt him. She covers him just like how he asked, cover him. And he was shivering, he was terrified. She waited, didn't interrupt, waiting. Until he settled. Then he told her, ya Khadija, if you know what just happened, I was in the cave, as you know, I'm spending the night there and someone randomly walks in. He says, read. I told him I cannot read. He squeezes me about to choke me to death. Did it three times. And he said, read in the name of your Lord, your Lord, the one who created, created you and I from my clot. You and I, Khadij, all of us from a clot. Read, your Lord is the most generous. Read, your Lord is the one who bestowed blessings upon you. He is the most generous. He will make the words preserved. And he will teach you that which you do not know. Khadija, my conclusion, you want my take? I'm about, uh, that's it, I'm possessed. I think I'm done. That's it, I'm, it's over, Khadija. Right when he said that, she told him, Kalla wallahi ya Muhammad, don't you ever say that. Ya Muhammad, there's no way the Creator will cause that to you. Do you know who you are, ya Muhammad? Let me remind you of who you are. 
Ya Muhammad, you're the best of family people. You're the best husband, you're the best son, you're the best nephew, you're the best grandson. You're the best cousin and nephew to all your family. No way the creator does that to someone like that. You are possessed? No way. Muhammad, you are someone who takes care of the weak. Takes care of the weak. When you are someone who's strong, you use it properly. Ya Muhammad, you're the most friendly, hospitable of people in Mecca. The Creator will never do to someone like that for someone who does these good deeds. Ya Muhammad, and you tu'inu ala nawa'ib al and you do everything that of good cause. No way Allah does something like that to someone who does these things. May Allah make us do things like that. Say Ameen. When she said that to him, she reassured him verbally. And obviously Khadija helped him big time, yes or no? Then Khadija didn't just talk like that, Khadija took him to her relative Waraka. Who is Waraka? Waraka is a scholar, one of the biggest scholars in all of Arabia who never worshiped idols. He was a person who is educated, he reads, he writes, but at this point he reached an old age and he became blind. She brought Khadija, her husband Muhammad, to Waraka. Waraka. My cousin, listen to what Muhammad has to say. Muhammad, speak up, what's going on? What's going on, speak up. He tells him the story. Waraka is paying attention. Waraka is moved. Waraka gets very emotional. Waraka is aware of the previous scriptures. Waraka tells him, the one who came to you and walked in upon you is the secret keeper. Huh? The secret keeper which the creator sends to those who end up becoming prophets and messengers. Just like how he sent it on to Moses, Musa alayhi salam. And Moses had to receive the message and fight Pharaoh and lift oppression and spread justice and worship the creator. That's the same one who came to you. Then Waraka says, Ah, oh, Ya laytani akuntu jadha, I wish I was young. I wish, I wish I was young and I wish I would be alive. I wish I would be alive when your people expel you, try to take you out of Mecca. Muhammad interrupted He said, wait, wait, wait. The message that I may receive will cause my people. Now you appreciate the sentence. My people who see me as the golden man of Mecca, the representative, the one who placed the black stone, the one who stopped bloodshed, the one who never lied, the one who people trust, all of that will go outside the window. They will kick me out of Mecca. Waraka, the scholar who read the history of the past prophets, he told them, Muhammad, no one ever came with a message similar to yours, except that enemies started to grow against him. Then Waraka told him, and if I live long enough, Ya Muhammad, if I live long enough to witness the day where people try to fight you and kick you out of Mecca, I will do whatever it takes. I'm blind, I'm old, I will do whatever it takes to save you and help you. Muhammad is moved, Khadija is moved. May Allah be pleased with Khadija. Khadija people, Khadija, Khadija, Khadija. The greatest woman and the greatest man, they still stick together through thick and thin, yes or no? And then they eventually leave. But what's the message? Like what's going on? What, what's needed from me? A day, two pass by and no revelation come. Muhammad is so sad, so I'm so sad. He now he wants to go perhaps to the cave again. He's walking and he's walking and walking and walking. And all of a sudden he sees someone who is who? The same one he saw in the cave, sitting in the air on a chair. Muhammad looks at him, what happens? He's terrified and he runs back to who? To Khadija. But this time, this person goes after him to the house. What will happen? What will be said? What in the world is next? We'll see you inshallah next month. Inshallah.